You ever wonder what it would be like to plug a drum machine into a frog? Okay, yeah, probably not, but have you thought about plugging a guitar into a death metal vocalist? What you just heard was our latest plugin, New Tone Morpho. Morpho transforms the tone of any input signal, such as my voice, to match the sonic characteristics of something else. Like this djembe percussion ensemble. Notice how it reacts to all the nuances of my voice, including amplitude, amplitude, and pitch. 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 Morpho uses our in-house deep learning architecture to achieve this effect. And with audio as our input, we're free from the constraints of typical sample libraries and MIDI data, and we can explore sound design from a whole new perspective. If you're interested, you can download the free version of Morpho now, which contains four of our favorite models, and I'll put a link in the description. You might be wondering if this works by sending your input sounds to a cloud server somewhere and then we like ping back the outputs, but actually all of the processing is happening locally on your machine. So this works offline. You could use it at a venue with no Wi-Fi, for example. We don't collect or monitor any of your audio data, and we don't steal copyrighted material when we train our models. This is ethically sourced AI for musicians and artists who just want a new tool to make some funky noises, sometimes some really banging ones, and sometimes some really goofy ones like the frog. I don't know what we were thinking there. <laughs> Start by quickly going over how Morpho works under the hood. And normally I wouldn't bother with this, but Morpho doesn't behave like a regular DSP plugin. And if you treat it like one, you're probably going to end up quite frustrated because most of the results sound seemingly random. Most of the models have their own quirks, their own strengths and weaknesses. So if you don't know how the models are trained in the first place, when it starts to do something strange, you're not going to have a good idea of why it's happening. So let's start by going over how they're trained and how all that works or you can skip straight to the practical examples by going to this timestamp. So super big picture, deep learning 101. Morpho models are trained on a type of neural network known as an autoencoder. And an autoencoder has two parts, an encoder and a decoder. So the encoder's job is to take our audio training data and then compress it into a low dimensional representation. And if we're struggling to visualize this, think about how we use descriptive language as a low dimensional representation of images. For example, if I ask you to imagine a yellow robot that's two meters tall, I don't need to send you a picture of the robot because your imagination has already painted this picture for you. So you've taken my low dimensional representation, you've taken my descriptive parameters, the yellow color and the height parameter of two meters, and you've reconstructed this signal. So the encoder's job is to compress, organize these low dimensional representations, and then the decoder's job is like your imagination. It learns to reconstruct, to resynthesize. Anyway, how does this result in the tone morphing effect? Well, it works by playing a really mean trick on the models. Let's say we train a model on violin sounds, like we have here with the uh, Classy Bach violin model. This is trained on public domain recordings of Bach sonatas. And you can always check exactly what data we use to train a model by clicking on its card in the browser. So in this case, the model learns to compress and organize our violin training data. But what happens after training's finished when we start to send it new kinds of sounds? Well, that's the trick. So if I send it drums or vocals, it's never heard drums or vocals before, right? It only ever heard violin during the training. So when it tries to encode and decode these new sounds, it does its best based on its knowledge of the violin, but that violin DNA gets imprinted into the signal. And that's your tone morphing effect. Let's 
put Morpho through its paces with a practical example. I have this bass sound that I like, and I want to enhance it using Morpho. I'll choose this model based on a traditional Chinese string instrument called a pipa. When I load this model in its default state, you'll notice that it sounds a bit rubbish. It isn't really following the bass part properly, and there's a good reason for this. Think about the pitch range that the model has learned from the pipa. It's much higher than the bass, so the model has never heard these low notes before, and it doesn't know how to react. We can solve this by pitch shifting our bass input signal two octaves up, moving it into the range of the pipa. Only the model hears this pitch shift. Any dry signal you hear from the plugin will remain at the same pitch. Now the model is following the bass nicely, and we have this organic, reactive sound. We can also hear how long sustained notes from the bass produce unexpected textures from the model. Perhaps this is because the bass has a longer sustain than what the model expects, and it doesn't know what to do with these long tails. Either way, we found a sound that we wouldn't normally expect from a bass or a peeper, and that's where the possibilities of Morpho really open up. Remember how the models encode compressed representations of the input signals, which help describe and organize the sounds. One of Morpho's best features is the ability to control these parameters from inside the plugin. For each model, we've created four macronobs that make big changes to how the sounds are encoded. The PIPA model has a macro knob called Tone, for example, which we can use as a sort of neural EQ. If you want even more control, you can dive into the micro view, which exposes the six most influential parameters. You can move, stretch, and even randomize these controls to find something you like. Let's turn our attention to these drums. The groove sounds quite static and could use some depth and variety. Let's load the djembe model and feed the drums in. While the drums aren't pitched like the bass, we can still use the pitch control to change the frequency content going into the model. Increasing the pitch results in a brighter sound that sits better with the original drums. For some movement, let's use the delay module and synchronize the timing with our track. Let's dive into the micro view and search for different tones. I'm going to hit the randomize button until I land on something I really like. results can be surprising and quite chaotic, but I think I've settled on this one. That's all for now. If you found this video interesting, you can check out Morpho by following the link in the description.